All of us know what it feels like to be tired. Whether it's late night studying, an illness, or just a hectic lifestyle, it happens and it's our body's way of telling us that we need some rest. Often, when we get it, we feel fine, but if tiredness drags on for no obvious reason, or rest and downtime isn't helping, it's time to get checked out. In this episode, we'll cover the common causes of tiredness, how to spot them, and what to do about them. Hi, I'm Dr. Sinan, the GP, your source on all things health related for you and your family. Tiredness is very subjective and it's a difficult one to pin down. Chances are, if you ask a random person if they're feeling tired, at the very least they would have to think about it and most people would probably say yes. So it's worth clarifying what we mean when we say tiredness. There is definitely a difference between normal tired and do I need to see my doctor tired. Fatigue, the medical term for tiredness, is when the tiredness is overwhelming and isn't relieved easily. If that's not specific enough for you, you can think of fatigue as an unpleasant physical, mental and emotional set of symptoms. It doesn't get better with the usual things that restore us, such as sleep and rest, and it's a variable intensity. It can be mild, it can be moderate, it can be severe and it's a variable duration. It can go on for hours, days, weeks, or even months. And it reduces our ability to perform our usual daily activities. The most important factor here is the inability to perform our usual daily activities. This is how most people recognize it, and it's not uncommon for consultations in my clinics to start with, I used to be able to go shopping all day and be fine, but now I just don't have the energy. Or I used to be able to climb a flight of stairs without getting tired, but now I struggle or I'm exhausted. Feeling exhausted is so common that it even has its own acronym, T-A-T-T, -T, which means tired all the time. So what causes fatigue? There are loads of things that cause fatigue. I find it helpful to think of them in three different ways, lifestyle, psychological and physical causes. Let's start with lifestyle. Most will be familiar to you and most are caused by indulging in extremes. So for example, unhealthy diets. Diets high in highly processed foods long-term increase sluggishness and things like caffeine found in fizzy drinks, energy drinks, tea and coffee often overstimulate us, affecting good sleep. Hydration is also really important as dehydration will affect everyday functioning and sleep too. Lack of exercise is another one. Too much or too little even can cause fatigue, but usually it's a case of people doing nothing and their bodies getting used to doing nothing also. Too much alcohol is important. Alcohol's a sedative and it makes people fall asleep quickly. That may sound like a good thing. However, as the night progresses, alcohol causes an imbalance in the normal sleep rhythm, resulting in a much poorer quality of sleep. Also, poor sleep due to things like technology or working night shifts is a big reason why we can feel tired. All of these make us tired in the long run. These are all common causes, and for many people, there are things in our lifestyle we can optimize to improve our energy levels. Better diet, regular exercise, less alcohol, and prioritizing sleep. Let's talk about psychological causes. This is the second major cause for fatigue, and this includes things like stress, anxiety, and depression. And this is unbelievably common. The number of people I see in clinic that are exhausted but then have all the hallmarks of clinical depression or chronic stress is staggering. This is probably a daily occurrence for me. The last main cause of fatigue is physical illness and these are due to a broad range of conditions and medical problems such as hormonal issues like diabetes or low thyroid levels, or lung problems such as asthma or snoring which affects sleep quality, or having fluid in the lungs. Deficiencies are common too, like iron or vitamin D deficiencies. 
Sometimes infections can make us tired, like glandular fever, or after a virus like coronavirus, and loads more causes, including medications, secondary to certain antidepressants, for example, or the early stages of pregnancy, obesity, and syndromes like chronic fatigue syndrome. Many of these diseases have other symptoms associated, but fatigue is one of the commonest ways people notice them. If you know the reason that you're tired and you can manage it, then know if the tiredness is getting in the way of your life or affecting your mood or making you unwell, then yes, you should definitely see a doctor. As a rule of thumb, if the tiredness has been going on for more than four weeks with no obvious cause or improvement, then you should definitely make an appointment with your GP. If you see me in clinic to talk about your fatigue, I'd usually be interested in what you mean when you say fatigue or tiredness. Sometimes people mean sleepiness or weakness, which are completely different problems altogether. I'm also keen to know about the duration and the severity of your fatigue and how it's affecting your life. Often persistent fatigue in the morning is a sign of depression. Your job, and does it include night work, is an important feature too. If your job or work is implicated, and it often is, in terms of stress and sleep, then we need a strategy to approach this. Stress and mood are key factors for me, and I always ask about how you're feeling. Are you feeling low, and what types of things do you enjoy currently? Sleep is key too, and I'm looking to see how people approach their sleep and how many hours they get per night on average. I'd also screen for the physical conditions I mentioned earlier, such as diabetes, asthma, or hypothyroidism, depending on the particular case. And finally, are there any worrying symptoms suggestive of a serious condition, such as night sweats, weakness, or unintentional weight loss? These may indicate that something else is going on, and there are other reasons, and you should definitely see your doctor if this is the case. Depending on the answer to the questions above, especially if a more physical cause is implicated, I would then examine you and order a blood test to screen for some of the medical causes we talked about earlier. So what's the treatment? There is no panacea here. This is a case of good old detective work to find out the cause and manage it accordingly. The main culprits are lifestyle related, stress, and depression, anemia, thyroid disease, and diabetes. All of these are subacute. They generally come on slowly and they grow into us to the point that we forget what it was like to be our old selves in terms of our energy levels. That being said, if you see your healthcare professional and have blood tests and a thorough history, all of these diagnoses will be picked up. People commonly suffer with fatigue for a long time before seeking help, which is a shame because the treatments can be very simple and straightforward and they often have a profound effect on your quality of life. For example, if you have anemia, thyroid disease or vitamin D deficiency, we can supplement with iron, thyroid or vitamin D. If you're diabetic, we can treat with lifestyle and medications if needed. And if your mood is low or you're stressed, then therapy or medications can sometimes help. With regards to lifestyle, lifestyle changes are incredibly important for treating fatigue. Look at your diet, as we discussed earlier, and cut back on caffeine, energy drinks, fizzy drinks, and sugary foods too. Also, sleep hygiene. Are you staring at your phone before you go to bed? Are you working at your laptop till late at night or watching TV and then heading to bed? Your body needs time to prepare itself for quality sleep and benefits from a routine. This is the case for kids just as much for adults. Blue light transmitted from electronic devices inhibit a hormone called melatonin, which is responsible for making us sleepy. So you should always allow yourself time, at least an hour or so before winding down from these electronic devices before you sleep. Some patients I speak to laugh at me when I suggest exercising to help treat their fatigue. I know it may sound bizarre and probably the last thing you have is energy to exercise, but exercise is actually remarkably effective for treating fatigue. 
any regular moderate exercise, things like walking, cycling or swimming can help you feel less tired. Start slow, especially if you find the thought of exercising whilst feeling exhausted quite daunting. Move around your house and then build up to walking on your street around the block until you pick up the pace and feel comfortable walking faster and further distances. As I mentioned, stress is one of the commonest causes for fatigue. And if you're optimizing your lifestyle to reverse fatigue, we really need to have a strategy for coping with pressure and developing our emotional resilience. Check out my talk on stress to learn more about practical ways to prevent stress getting the better of you. So what are the take home messages? Fatigue is one of the commonest things we see in clinic. If you notice that it persists for longer than usual and you're more tired doing the things you used to do, it's time to get checked. Most causes of fatigue are due to lifestyle and mood or secondary to anemia, thyroid disease and diabetes. With the detailed history, examination and blood test, the vast majority of physical symptoms for fatigue can be pinned down, so it's worth getting checked out. Treatment for fatigue is cause specific, but the good news is that once the cause is found, treatments are often straightforward and effective with a big impact on quality of life. If you found today's topic useful, don't forget to share with your friends and family and click the subscribe button to stay in the loop. You can find out more at Dr. Sinan, the GP, Com. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions for future topics, I'd love to hear from you. So do message in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time, stay healthy.